That's a little weird. Oh well. I'll go with it for now and I'll fix it later. Here's where we left off. My colors look all weird. Oh well. It says, you're doing a spacewalk outside the space shuttle with no cable between you and the shuttle. And your small maneuvering rocket pack suddenly quits on you. <gasps> and you are stranded in space with nothing but a $50,000 camera in your hands. What will you do to get back to the shuttle? Sorry? Throw the camera which way? <laughs> Throw camera away from space shuttle. Brett, I agree with you. Why? Can you tell me in terms of physics? What's your momentum right now floating in space? Zero. What does your momentum then have to be afterwards? Still, zero. So if I give the camera a negative momentum that way, and I know that my momentum has to be zero, what will my momentum automatically have to become? A positive momentum. that way. And I should have drawn these exactly the same length because to show that they exactly cancel each other out. Now because I have a bigger mass than the camera, my velocity will be slower. But we're in outer space. Once I have any velocity, Newton's first law says I'll keep going forever and ever and ever. As long as I aim carefully, I'll run into the space shuttle. It may take 20 minutes, but I'll get there. Okay. That's really how they maneuver in orbit. They use some kind of a rocket system, and the particles going out of the rocket have a negative momentum. Must mean you have a positive momentum in the opposite direction. Oh, like example four. A rocket expels 1.2 times 10 to the third kilograms of gas each second, and the gas leaves the rocket with a speed of that. Will the thrust produced by the rocket be sufficient to lift it if the force of gravity on the rocket is that. Okay. This question has two parts. First, let's look at the momentum aspect of things. I want to find thrust. <coughs> Where am I getting my thrust from? The engine. And I think because I see a mass and I see a velocity and I do see a time, I'm going to go impulse equals impulse. Change in momentum equals change in momentum. where this force here is the thrust of the rocket itself. Let's get the thrust by itself. I think I'll get force equals the change in momentum divided by the change in time. How much time? Well, the amount of time they give me is every single second. So I think change in time, Kayla, is just going to be 1, which is going to be nice. And what's changing anything? This is going to be final minus initial. Now, we defined momentum. We said that momentum was equal to mass times velocity. So final momentum is mv final. Uh, you know what? I'm going to assume that the gas in the rocket starts out at rest and then gets thrust outwards. I'm going to assume that the initial momentum of the gas is zero. I think the thrust of the motor is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the third times 5 times 10 to the fourth. This is how much 
thrust the rocket can put out. What do you get? Don't all rush for your calculators at once or anything. 1.2 times 5 is 60... 6 times 10 to the 8? Someone check me. No? What do you get? Caitlin, what'd you get? To the seventh or to the eighth? I thought I think it's to the eighth, isn't it? Am I wrong? I could be wrong. I have no idea what you said. Sorry. Yeah. So count careful. What? Is it really? I don't believe you guys. Really? One. Yeah, but it's 1.2 times 5, which is 60, which... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Oh, this should do it, because wrong. Don't be too scared. I'm wrong occasionally. Good gosh. I thought I'd get an extra zero in there. My bad. Now, that's the thrust of the rocket. That's not what this question is asking. It's asking, will we get liftoff? I guess I should say liftoff question mark. You know what I'm going to do now? Now I'm going to analyze the forces. Free body diagram. Here's the forces acting on my rocket. What are the forces acting on my rocket when it's sitting on the ground here? Get the obvious ones. Gravity down. Oh, and it tells me the force of gravity. And thrust. It says that the force of gravity is 5.8 times 10 to the 7th. And we just calculated thrust was 6 times 10 to the 7th. Do we have enough thrust to get liftoff? Free, do we? Yep, just barely. In fact, to one sig fig, no. To two sig figs, barely. Heck, if I was bored, I could even calculate the acceleration by going winner minus loser equals MA. They didn't give me the mass, but they gave me MG, so I can figure out the mass if I really wanted to. Momentum is really useful in analyzing collisions. Anytime there is a collision, I go to conservation of momentum. I'm going to go to what we underlined or put a box around back here. Example 5. A 3.2 kilogram cart traveling 1.2 meters per second collides. I'm going to underline the word collides. That's my trigger. With a stationary 1.8 kilogram cart. And the two stick together. What's their common velocity after the collision? Trevor, what's their collision? I'm going to start out by saying... The sum of all of the initial momentum has to equal the sum of all the final momentum. Where the equal sign is the collision itself. Before the collision, was the first cart moving? Did it have momentum? Before the collision, was the first cart moving? Did it have momentum, Brett? Before the collision, was the second cart moving? Did it have momentum? No. So I could go plus momentum to initial, but that's zero. After the collision, did they stick together or come apart? Read the question. We're going to say then the momentum of both final, because they're stuck together. We're going to treat them as one big glob mass. 
this is going to become momentum we said was what times what Sean this is going to be mass 1 v1 initial equals mass 1 plus mass 2 because they're sticking together v final Are they in a nice straight line? Yep. So no trig, and no vector math. Uh, if it said backwards or forwards, Emily, I would let one be po forwards be positive and backwards be negative. But I think the common velocity, V final, because they're in a nice straight line, is going to be M1 V1 initial divided by M1 plus M2. It's going to be 3.2 times 1.2 divided by 3.2 plus 1.8. One the final velocity that move off together is... You get 0.768 meters per second. What we're really saying is when you collide into with something, you slow down. Did it? Let's try that again. This time, let's try pausing the video so I'm not asking my computer to. <laughs> they stick together and they move off at a common velocity, which is why we were able to say, oh, the momentum of both final. Example six A railway car is coasting along the track at seven meters per second. Suddenly, a load of coal is dumped into the car. That's a collision, essentially. What's its new velocity? The sum of all the momentum initial equals the sum of all the momentum final. Before the collision, what was moving? What had momentum? And that's really what we're asking, Matt, because momentum is mass times velocity. But I'm really saying is, hey, which ones are moving? They're stationary. We can ignore them. What was moving before the collision? I'll call that mass of the railway car initial, I'll use the letter R for that. Coal was not, it was sitting in the case above the railway car. They, boom, drop the coal in and they stick together. So afterwards it's going to be the momentum of both final. In fact, it's really the same question as we just did. It's going to be the mass of the railway car, velocity of the railway car initial, and that's going to be mass of the railway car plus mass of the coal, V final. Joel, does this question mention directions or angles or anything like that? No. Joel, do you have your actual notes from last day here? Were you here last day? And would you like a copy to follow along? Would that help you? V final is going to be mass of the railway car, velocity of the railway car, initial 
divided by the mass of the railway car plus the mass of the coal. It's going to be 6,000 times 7 divided by 6,000 plus 2,000. You get five point two five. Yeah. Meters per second. Car crashes. Example seven. A car traveling thirty three meters per second collides head on with a car traveling twenty two meters per second in the opposite direction. in the opposite direction. If the cars stick together, what's the velocity of the wreckage immediately after impact? Is there a collision here, Mitchell? Then first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the sum of all the momentum initial has to equal the sum of all the momentum final. Before the collision, was the first car moving? Yeah. Mass of the first car, sorry, momentum of the first car plus was the second car moving before the collision? Yeah. Momentum of the second car after the collision, are they separate or did they stick together? So, momentum of both. Final. Momentum is what times what? Mass of car 1, velocity of car 1, initial, plus mass of car 2, velocity of car 2, initial, equals mass 1 plus mass 2, V final. Is that okay, Kara? If I want to find V final, it looks like V final is going to be the mass of car 1, its initial velocity, plus mass of car 2, its initial velocity, divided by the mass of both cars. Here we go. Zay, what's mass 1? You with me? No? Where are you? Working on other stuff? Okay. Mitchell, what's math one? What's math one? Sorry? That's 1200. What's velocity one, Mitchell? I agree. What's math two, Mitchell? Careful now. What's velocity two? Ah! going to make a huge difference in our answer. Divided by, gee, if this is multiple choice, would I also have the positive 22 answer there for you to pick from? Yeah, sorry, but yeah. Divided by 1,200 plus 1,800. What will these cars move off at? By the way, if I get a negative answer, I know that the first car ends up getting moved backwards because we let the first car be positive. If I get a positive answer, I know that the second car ended up getting moved backwards. Yes? What'd you get? Oh. What'd you get, Brett? Zero? Zero? Exactly zero? Really? What does that mean? What does that tell us? First of all, what was the initial momentum of everything then? Before the collision, what was my initial momentum? Zero. 
And I guess this is one of those fluke head-on collisions where, boom, they hit and they came to a stop. It wasn't one of them winning and pushing the other car back or the other car winning and pushing the other car back. And I've simplified this, Jacob. We're having them hit also dead-on, no angles as well. Angles, two dimensions, then we're going to have to get into some heavy trip. Yeah, zero. Couple more and we're done. What impulse, Nicole? What's impulse? What impulse must be imparted to a 145 gram baseball to change its velocity from 40 meters per second south to 50 meters per second north? Okay. It said impulse. I'll go straight to writing change in momentum. And what's changing anything, Emily? Okay. And momentum is what times what? Did Bree bail you out? It's okay, I know. This is going to be mass V final minus mass V initial. What's the mass? 0.145? Yes. What's my final velocity? 50 minus. What's my mass? 0.145. What's my initial velocity? And don't say 40 because it's not. Caitlin. Negative 40. Or I could have let the final be negative and the initial be positive, but I'm telling you, I have to let them be opposites. What change in momentum if I want to turn on a pitcher's 40 meters per second pitch and send it out of the park at 50 meters per second? What impulse do I need to give that baseball? What did you get, Connor? I don't know where you were, but I don't think it was here. And Connor, I have to drool a little bit there. Too. Jacob, what'd you get? Thirteen point five. Anyone else? Thirteen point oh five. So thirteen point one. 13.1 what units? Well, it's change in momentum. What was momentum? Mitchell. It's mass times velocity. And I told you they're talking about calling this an Einstein, but they haven't yet, so we can't jump the gun. For me? Isn't that what you I thought you just said meters per second. Okay. Right? Mass times velocity, it's kilogram meters per second. It's it's the longest unit that you'll always be writing this year, in that they they haven't shortened it to anything yet. I'm always I'm waiting for it to happen. Um, I would also accept a negative there if you would let this be positive, a negative, and this be positive. That's fine. And the negative would simply be telling you it's in the opposite direction that the ball was traveling at the beginning. B. If the collision between the baseball and the bat lasted point, uh, one millisecond, what force did the bat exert on the baseball? What do they want me to find here? Force. What did I just find here? Connor, what did I just find in part A? I think I have an equation that has force and impulse in it. It looks like this. Yes? Sean, how would I get the F by itself? Okay, let's do that. The force is the impulse divided by the time. We know the impulse. Now, I'm not going to write 13.1. What was it exactly on your calculator? 13.05 even? 13.05 even divided by 
And how much time is this? It's one millisecond, which I'm pretty sure is 0 0.001 seconds, if I recall. How many newtons of force minimum would I need to be able to exert through the bat if I wanted to send this out of the park? Thirteen thousand. So one point three one times ten to the one, two, three, fourth units. Kara, we looked at a head-on collision in number seven where by a fluke the momentums exactly canceled each other out. Usually that doesn't happen. What about rear-ending somebody? Example nine. A 2,000 kilogram car is traveling at 15 meters per second and it rear-ends another car of mass 1,000 kilograms. The second car was initially moving at 6 meters per second in the same direction. What's their common velocity if they stick together after the impact? Okay. Arvinder, is there a collision? Yeah, then we're going to go the sum of all the initial momentums equal the sum of all the final momentums. Initially, Nicole, I think we had car one moving, and we had car two moving. Did they stick together or are they separate afterwards? Okay, now if they were separate, all I would do is I would write car one final, car two final. I'd have them separate, big deal. And I'd solve for whatever I needed to. They stuck together, momentum of both. Final. Momentum is what times what? Anyone, momentum is what times what? It's mass times velocity. So this is going to be 2,000. Ooh, I'm sticking numbers in right away for a change, something different. Seeing if I can streamline this a little bit. Times 15 plus 1,000 times, times what? 6 or negative 6? Which one? Why 6? Same direction equals they stuck together, so the total mass is 2,000 plus 1,000, V final. Now, Connor, I, I took a couple of shortcuts here. I didn't actually write out the formula. On a quiz or a test, I'd probably write out the actual M1, V1 initial, M2, V2. Here, we're in our homework. We're seeing how good we get. Because to get the V final by itself, what am I going to do, Connor? Divide by 3,000, both masses. Oh, let's see. Divide by 3, you'll get a 2 there. You get 12? Yeah, even. The faster car slows down. The slower car speeds up, and because the slower car was lighter, it speeds up more than the faster car, which was heavier, slowed down. Make sense? We're good. Turn the page. I thought about doing this as a demonstration, but it's a messy one, dropping eggs on the floor. Two eggs are dropped from the same height, H. One hits the floor and breaks. Oh. The second one lands in a pail of water and survives. What's the main reason the second egg survives? Well, let's look at this. First of all, 
What is both of their initial velocities? Are they both falling the same distance? Yeah. Same height. So what can you tell me about their final velocity just before impact, whether it's ground or water? OK. Yes? I think this means, therefore, they each go through the same impulse. They both go through the same change of momentum. Why does the egg survive then? If they both go through the same momentum, why does the same change of momentum, why does the egg that lands in the pail survive? Shouldn't it also crack? Nicole, for a candy, talk to me, my girl. Is there an equation that has time and impulse in it? Okay. Yeah? What are you telling me then, Nicole? You know what? Let's go like this. Floor. Water. Big time. Little force. Little time. Big force. Does that make sense the way I wrote that with just big and small letters? Is that okay? I would never write that on a test. I'd actually write out, you know, bigger force, smaller time, smaller force, bigger time. But yeah, the water lengthens the time of impact. As a matter of fact, that's why I bought. If we can lengthen the time of collision, we lower the force. Because we're stuck with, by the way, in any car crash, you're all stuck with the same change of momentum. In fact, any time you come to a stop at a red light, haven't you gone from full velocity to zero velocity, the exact same change in momentum that you would do in a head-on collision? Except we lengthen the time dramatically, dropping the force dramatically. Right? Here's a good uh, translating graph question. I told you you would start to see some of those. So if we look at a graph of force versus time for the egg hitting the floor, it'll probably look something like this. Which of the following graphs, A, B, or C, would best represent the force time graph for the egg hitting the water? And it says the egg on the floor graph is shown as a dashed line for comparison purposes. I don't, did it appear on yours? Because it doesn't appear on my screen. Do you guys have a dotted line? On, okay. So I think it would be something kind of like this. Which of those do you think is the best graph of dropping the egg from the same height in the water. Emily, C, convince me. Okay, so I, I agree. I think the obvious wrong answer is that one because if the time of collision is the same amount, you couldn't possibly lower the force. I notice both of these have roughly the same time of collision. Okay. What's this measuring? Force. What's this measuring? Where does impulse appear on this graph? By the way, what you should be trying right now is saying, is it the slope? Try dividing the units. Or is it the area? Try multiplying the units. Where does impulse, because that's that trick that I showed you in the last lesson of last unit. I said, when in doubt, multiply or divide. Area, multiply, or divide, slope. Where does impulse appear here? Impulse, which is change in momentum, 
Isn't that the area? Because isn't force times time also impulse? The impulse is that there. So what you're really doing also, Emily, is kind of eyeballing how big is this area. And I think it's about the same size as this area. In fact, if I draw a line like that down the middle, I can flip this right to there and kind of get that same shape. I think, I think this is too much area. I need numbers to be more specific. Okay? Explain your answer. We just did. Homework. So, number one. Now, this homework is not due next class. This homework is your homework for Friday. Number two. Three. Four. Five. Skip six. Number seven is a nice review for last unit, so it's not officially homework in that it's the next unit, but if you're looking for a good practice graph work question, kinetic energy question for your test, that would be a good one. Number eight is a nice little tricky one, one for you to think about. So skip six, basically. Got a little video to show you.